So now we have seen how to apply the approximation for the bit error rate coming from the union bound to two modulation formats. QPSK, phase shift keying, excuse me, MPSK, phase shift keying, and MFSK, frequency shift keying. And I'd like to apply it now to quadrature amplitude modulation. And before I do that, I'll just um, like to delve a little bit more deeply into QAM and particularly into the good normalization of this um, a little more complex, if you will, um, modulation format. And for a reason that I'm not quite sure of, this happens to fall in chapter nine of the textbook. So it's not in chapter four like all of the other material, but rather chapter nine. So quadrature amplitude modulation. Basically in this formulation, we take the XY plane, the two dimensional plane, and we just put points anywhere we want on it. So we can change the amplitude, we can change the phase, that means we can put the points anywhere we like. Uh, for instance, we could have um, uh, sort of a rectangle, for if I take m equal 4, there's different geometries I can use that has uh, four symbols in the constellation. I could use a rectangle like QPSK, but I could also do something that looks like this y, um, uh, this y configuration, and they, they, each one might be uh, interesting for, for different reasons. Uh, rectangular, of course, very popular, and we'll be taking that example. Even the triangular format uh, uh, can be found in some standards. Uh, certain concentric circles, and you can see uh, these geometries can be a little complex. For instance, here's there's five circle, uh, five points on the circle, and then on the outer one, I'm, I'm not sure, it looks like there's about 10. So um, these can be quite um, arbitrary. So 5, 11, I guess there are 11 on the other. Um, hexagonal, very um, efficient way of packing uh, points onto a constellation. So all this variety. And all this variety exists um, for meeting different requirements. For instance, uh, some of these um, modulation formats can collapse into other ones um, so that depending on the reliability of the channel, we can drop some points of the constellation. So many different reasons for which different formats of this uh, constellation might be appropriate. Uh, for us, what's interesting is that now we have this approximation coming from the union bound, which we could really apply to any one of these uh, and uh, easily uh, find an approximation for the bit error rate, no matter how, uh, despite the variety of the different modulation formats we've become at. Because what do we need to do? We need to find the d-min, and we need to be able to count the number of near, uh, pairs of the nearest neighbor. So, you know, you can look at any of these geometries and be able to achieve uh, this goal. But all of it, remember, relies on a very efficient uh, normalization of the constellation in order to make it truly the signal space. So you can see why we might want to have two different spaces, the IQ space and the signal space, because you can see that these geometries can be um, bizarre a bit. <laughs> and so we want to be able to use IQ space because then I can just pick any coordinate system that makes it easy for me to figure out what's going on. Uh, for instance, if we uh, look here, where I have one ring and a second ring, so it's e easy to describe this by R1 and R2, and um, then I could talk about the number of points, so, so, so I could find something that was convenient. And it wouldn't be normalized to the average energy per bit. So what I do is I start off IQ where it's easy for me to just get the geometry straight. And once I have the geometry straight, then I have to convert it and go to signal space with the right normalization. Because once I'm in signal space, then I can find D-min. Remember, D-min has no meaning unless I'm in signal space where everything is in terms of EB or ES, the average energy per symbol or the average energy per bit because it's really easy to go back and forth between those two. So, what is the definition of the average energy per symbol? It's quite simple. Energy ES, we call it, and it's just 1 over M, and then we uh, sum up all of the different energies. And so you could see that it doesn't really matter which geometry it is. It's very well defined for all of them. Uh, you'll notice that in QAM, unlike PSK and FSK, the two examples we saw previously, in those, all the symbols had the same energy. 
Let's look at this example. In this example, one collection of five uh, symbols has one energy because it's at one distance from the origin, but the other 11 have a different energy. Uh, in the hexagonal one, you can see it's even more complex. There are many different distances from the origin. Symbols have different energies. So that's why it's terribly important to uh, base things on the average energy because otherwise it's very ambiguous. So two coordinate systems in the signal space, the normalization ensures that the distance to the origin corresponds to the signal energy and the signal energy in terms of EB or ES. So it's just like, like a very typical essay question for an exam. What is signal space? How is signal space different from the IQ space? IQ space, I don't have any normalization. I just pick something that's easy. So the simple coordinates for the chosen geometry. And what is the difference between these two spaces? Well, you look at them and at face value, they look identical. The only difference between them is a normalization. And so I might take a few minutes now to just go over what would the uh, no, correct normalization B, how could I go about it? So let's first take the example of QPSK. And QPSK here, I have the signal space representation where I have the coordinates listed in terms of the uh, average energy uh, per symbol. And in this case, I can easily calculate what is the minimal distance because I have the right coordinates. And so I can see now that, uh, you know, this distance is easy to calculate. It's just the um, y coordinate that's changed and it's twice the difference of the y coordinates and so we get this relationship. Now what would be a convenient set in IQ coordinates? So in IQ coordinates I might say it's plus and minus one because this you know is real intuitive for me that I could have a logical zero, a logical one, and then uh, these coordinates correspond to them. So that, that's easy but this is the signal space and I know it's signal space because it has an ES. But I didn't just say it's uh, capital ES minus capital ES. That wouldn't work because when I actually calculated the average energy per symbol, I wouldn't get ES. So ES has to be chosen so that when I actually go through the effort of calculating the average energy, that I do indeed get this, this number uh, ES. So how do I go back and forth in an easy way? So I assume that I'm starting in... Uh, IQ space. So here is IQ space. And I, I assume I'm starting there because IQ is easier. I'm choosing simple coordinates. So I have a set of coordinates in the IQ plane. And these are this collection here, AN IQ. And what I want to come up with is uh, put a tilde on top here. What I want to know is what are the coordinates in the signal space? So here I'm giving you an equation for the coordinates in the signal space as a function of the coordinates in the IQ space. So if I'm in the IQ space, all I have to do in order to get into the signal space is multiply by this factor. And you can see that this factor is uh, based on the energy per symbol and, of course, the number of bits. And then here you can see right inside of here, I am actually calculating what is the average energy based on the coordinates in the I and Q. So in, in this case, it's not actually the energy. I'm calculating what is the average square distance to the origin. And I'm forcing that average square distance to the origin to be ES. So let's take an example of how I can use this equation to calculate um, the um, coordinates in signal space for 16 quam, square 16 quam. So square 16 quam is a geometry that's quite simple. It goes from... Uh, uh, this would be 1, this would be minus 1, here's 1, and minus 1, right? That's QPSK. Now I want to make this bigger, I'm going to make it 16 points instead of 4 points, but I want to keep it tiled, I want to keep this square geometry so that everything is at the sort of the same uh, distance. So of course I want this distance to be the same as this distance. So this distance here is 2, and so this one should also be 2, so the coordinates here would be uh, 3 at this point. This would be minus 3, and of course this would be minus 3, and this would be 3. So if I look at the coordinates for 16 quam, here are the 16 points. It's plus and minus 1, all the combinations, plus and minus 3, all the combinations, and the combinations of plus 1, plus 3, minus 1, minus 3, etc. All those. Those are the 16 points. 
So I take these 16 points, and I see that I'm going to have to uh, calculate the square uh, distance to the origin. So I start looking at this constellation, and I say, well, how am I going to calculate this? And I think, oh, I'm going to make it easy on myself. And I can see that there are four points that are at the same distance from the origin. These four points are all at the same distance from the origin. And so I look and I say, well, what is the distance to the origin for these? And I say, well, it's clearly the square root of 2 in this coordinate system. So I know that I have four points at the distance of the square root of 2. And then I start looking at the other ones. Okay, now there's another distance here. And I figure out what this distance is, one here, three here, and I calculate that that gives me a distance of the square root of 10. And in fact, there are eight points uh, that are at uh, this um, distance. So I have eight points that are at the square root of 10. And of course, that leaves four points, the far farthest points, the uh, points in the corners of the constellation. And those, of course, are at a distance of uh, if I did the math right, it would be uh, the square root of 18. Okay, so now I have everything I need in order to calculate this sum inside of this equation. So I go ahead and I add them all up, and I get 160 for the denominator. And of course, uh, if I looked at the top, it was m, and of course that's just uh, 16. So this is the normalization constant that I use in order to convert from uh, IQ coordinates into signal space coordinates. So now I know the coordinates of each one of the uh, points of the constellation. Whatever the old coordinates were, I just multiply them by this factor, and of course I can simplify it into the square root of ES, the square root of ES over 10. So this is the normalization factor for 16 QAM. And every QAM that I use will have a different normalization factor. I just have to find it out from the geometry. So in this case, now I can ask myself, what is the minimum distance? So the minimum distance, well, I know it's the space, which normally would have been 2, but it's not 2 anymore. Uh, now I'm going to multiply um, by this uh, normalization factor. So in fact, I get that the d min is 2 times uh, this normalization factor, or the square root of ES over 10. Great, I have my d min now. I can go into my equation um, for the um, bit error rate. And of course, uh, I'm going to want to use this in terms of EB, and uh, for 16 quam, EB is equal to ES over 4. So one more thing remaining, I have to know the number of pairs at the minimal distance. So I just go and I count them, which ones are the closest, and uh, if I look at any given row, I see that there will be three pairs for, per row. And of course, there are four rows, so I get 12 pairs, sort of in the red. And then I look at each column, and I see that in each column, I will have three pairs at the minimum distance. So that tells me that in total, there are 24 pairs of points, uh, symbols in the constellation, which are at the minimal distance. So now I am ready to go into the union bound. I know that k is equal to 24, m is equal to 16, and the d min I found by the correct normalization. So substituting these numbers in, I come up with an expression for the probability of error for 16 quam, which is 3q times, uh, 3, uh, 3 times q of the square root of es, this is the energy per symbol, over 5n0, and of course I could write that in terms instead of eb, uh, and then I have eb over n0 here as one of the terms. Now, I could generalize this approach that I just used with you. You could generalize to find out for m a square constellation. In this case, um, m was equal to 16, which is 4 squared. But I could do the uh, same thing, and I could sort of expand this idea. If it's always plus and minus an odd number, because the difference between them is always 2. So um, this is uh, an even number l. And uh, therefore, it's always an odd number, l minus 1. And these are the coordinates in any square quam. And based on this, I can do the uh, math and come up with the coordinates in the signal space and have as a very easy form. Uh, instead of um, m minus 1, I'll use l squared minus 1. You see them in different uh, um, forms for this equation. But uh, I'll leave that as an exercise, but it's quite easy to come up with this uh, expression.
So the minimal distance in this case would be two times this normalization constant. And I could write this in terms of EB and it comes out nice uh, nicely if I write it in terms of L. So very uh, nice, simple equation uh, for any square QAM constellation. So now I have the uh, D-min uh, that I just calculated with you uh, now. Looks like this. And uh, the next thing is, again, to extrapolate to find K. And just as we counted in the case of 16 QAM, we could do a similar counting where there are L minus one pairs per row, L rows, et cetera. So we get a total of two L times L minus one pairs in the uh, constellation. And this is where you can see it's easier to work with L rather than saying the square root of N. So we can plug this in now into our uh, general equation coming from the approximation coming from the union bound. And we get uh, this equation for the uh, probability of error for uh, a square QAM constellation. Uh, it is possible, again, uh, to find in this uh, special case a very uh, symmetric uh, constellation uh, to come up with a general uh, an exact expression for the rectangular case. I refer you to Digital Communications Pro Proacus, where he has the development of this equation. And uh, you can see that, again, our approximati approximation coming from the union bound is extremely close to the exact value. In fact, it's just a multiplicative factor in the difference. So we saw earlier the performance for MPSK. It was a coherent receiver. Remember, I say that implicit in these expressions for the correlator in each one of the branches, I write cosine omega zero t, but implicit in there is an understanding that I have tracked the phase and that in fact the phase is aligned at the receiver and the transmitter in which case we have this nice uh, form for the um, coherent receiver for MPSK. And we found earlier the uh, expression for the bit error rate. And so now I'd like to say what for QAM and QAM would be, again, the receiver structure and the equation. These are the two things that we need um, to uh, have a good idea about how to make compromises when we look at a complete uh, system. So um, when we uh, look at the um, I'm sorry, this should be this is MPSK and this should be MFSK. Very sorry about that. And then we saw before, of course, in the last lecture, we saw the form of the receiver and the um, equation for the bit error rate. And now I give you the new result, which is the MQAM. And what's interesting is the MQAM has exactly the same format as the MPSK receiver. You have two branches. Again, you have one in cosine and one in sine. These give you the coordinates of the point in the two-dimensional space, which is where the constellation falls. So whether I'm in two-dimensional in PSK, where everything is constrained to be on the unit circle, or if I am in QAM, where I can have anything all over the uh, the plane that I want, and I can define that as my constellation. In either case, the receiver is really doing the same thing. It, the first thing it does is calculate the coordinates of the received signal in the signal space. That's what these two branches are doing. So these um, sufficient statistics, these decision statistics that I'm getting, it's like a ordered pair, the in-phase and the quadrature coordinate. And this tells me what, where that point falls in the two-dimensional plane in signal space. And then, of course, I have a decision stage, and I use that in order to select the closest, or if I have a priori information, uh, to maximize the a posteriori probability. And what comes out is an estimate of which symbol was sent. So that's the form of the receiver. And of course, in the square case, we have an equation. And if it's not a square geometry, but it's one of these other arbitrary geometries, well, then we just go back to the general equation and you find the d-min, you count the number of pairs, the, the um, minimal distance, and you plug them into this equation. 